فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإنا وكتاب الورقات بإمام أبي معالي الجوين رحمه الله إمام الحرمين We have previously taken uh, أصول الفقه and Mufradayhi, we took usul what it meant, bi'atibari mufradayhi, what usul meant, and then what fiqh meant. But the last lesson that we had, we talked about it, bi'atibari laqaban li hadha al-fan. We took usul al-fiqh together, what they meant. And what we also mentioned is, what are the chapters that usul al-fiqh deals with? And we mentioned that there were 23 chapters that usul al-fiqh deals with. We added, the Shaykh, he mentions in his book 21, and we added two additional ones which were Al-Mutlaq wal muqayyad Good. Um, the first of the chapters is what? Aqsamul Kalam, the types of speech. The first one was as the types of speech. So this is what we're going to be talking uh, about, uh, inshallah ta'ala, for a long time uh, in, in this book, inshallah ta'ala. So the Shaykh says, al kalamu speech. فَأَمَّا أَقْسَامُ الْكَلَامِ As for the types of kalam, فَأَقَلُّ the minimum مَا يَتَرَكَّبُ مِنْهُ الْكَلَامِ The minimum a speech can consist of is إِسْمَانِ two nouns. The minimum a speech can consist of is two nouns. <coughs> أو إسم وفعل أو a, 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 a noun and a verb. A noun and a verb. That's the second. The third one, which is فعل وحرف verb and a particle. A verb and a particle. The last one, which is the fourth one, is اسم وحرف a noun and a particle. That is what Al Imam Al Haramain said in the matter of Warakat. Abdullah ibn Salih al Fawzan, whose sharh we take. He said, explaining that, he said as follows. He says, يُعْنَى أَهْلُ الْأُصُولِ He said, the people of Usul, meaning this field that we are studying, which is called Usul al-Fiqh, the people of this field, they give consideration and concern and importance to what? Chapters pertaining to speech. They give it importance. And its types, they talk about it. Ulama of Usul, they talk about speech. Just like the grammarians and the scholars of rhetoric and eloquency, Balaga, the way they talk about it as well is how the Usuliyun they talk about it. But the grammarians and the scholars who deal with rhetorics and eloquency, the angle in which they look at speech is different from the angle which the Usuliyun, the scholars of Usul al-Fiqh, look at it. The matter pertaining to Kalam for the people of Usul is very important. For them, it's very important. The ulama of Usul al-Fiqh, Kalam is very important for them. Why? Because they lead they need to know the kalam of Allah and the kalam of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They need to know it. So that what they do is they look at the speech of Allah and the speeches of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does that require? The speeches of Allah and His Messenger are what language? They are in the Arabic language. They are in clear, pure Arabic language. Abdullah ibn Salah al-Fawzan keeps on saying, وَمَنْ لَا يَعْرِفُ اللُّغَةِ Anybody who doesn't know the Arabic language, لَا يُمْكِنُهُ It is impossible for him. إِسْتِمْبَاطُ الْأَحْكَامِ To extract rulings. مِنَ الْكِتَابِ From the book of Allah. وَالسُنَّةِ From the sunnah. إِسْتِمْبَاطُ الْصَحِيحًا A correct extraction. 
He can't do a correct extraction. He will cause a lot of confusion and misguidance. He will cause a lot of confusion and misguidance. What does kalam linguistically mean according to the ulama of usul? What do they consider linguistically? What does it mean? Speech linguistically means what? Al-lafdhu. al li ma'dan. It is utterance that is placed to have a meaning. It is utterance that is placed according to the Arabic language, which has a meaning. Why do we say utterance? Because we want to leave the filthy view of the Asha'ira who believe that speech is what? It is not utterance. They believe speech is what is inside you even if it comes out as a sign language, they still consider that speech. And so what are they trying to negate from that angle? They are trying to negate that Allah's speech doesn't have sound or a voice. And they want to follow the speech of a disbeliever who said, he said, إِنَّ الْكَلَامَ لَفِي الْفُؤَادِ وَإِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ لِمَا فِي الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا The speech is, is what's inside you. And the tongue is only evidence to bring out what is inside you. So they want to say Allah wa ta'ala doesn't speak because the speeches of Allah is what? Is inside him. So when they were asked, if that's the case, then how did this Quran come to us? They said that Jibreel is his speech. That's the call of the Asha'ira one. The second view that the Asha'ira have no, they believe Allah created the speech. In the air. The third one is the Quran is from the Messenger. And the fourth one is Allah placed this Quran on the trees. Those are the four views that Sha'ira have. So the Asha'ira, when it comes to the issue of Allah's speech, they have the belief of the Jahmiya from an angle. And they are not far fetched from the view of the Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila. They say the Qur'an that we have is a, the usage of it is the message of the usage. Or Jibreel, or created in the wind, or placed on the trees. So they said when Musa, when Allah was speaking to him, where did the speech come from? We called him min ayman, from the angle of the tree. They said the tree was speaking. Ahlul Sunnah refuted them by saying, can the tree say, إِنَّنِي أَنَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُنِي وَأَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي Can the tree say, I am the one who is worthy of worship, worship me alone? Can it say it? No. So then, it wasn't this. It just came from that direction. Not from the tree. Good. And the speech of the Asha'ira in this matter is كَلِمَةُ كُفْرٍ it's an utterance and a speech which is disbelief. Like as you all are aware of Ahlul Sunnah, they have what? They say, and which is a qa'idah you need to memorize, Ahlul Sunnah believe, لَيْسَ كُلُّ, ليس كل مَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الْكُفْرِ وَقَعَ الْكُفْرُ عَلَيْهِ Ahlul Sunnah believe, not everybody who falls into kufr, does kufr fall onto him. Not everybody who falls into a matter of kufr, does it necessitate that the kufr falls onto him, meaning he becomes a disbeliever? No. A person may do a matter which is disbelief, but there are obstacles that are standing between him becoming a disbeliever, and those matters are al ilmu al munafi lil jahl, al qasadu al munafi lil khata'i, al ikhtiyar al munafi lil ikrah. Uh, it is knowledge that negates ignorance, which is the first condition. Um, willing, willingly intending, which negates uh, mistake and error. The third one, which is willingly choosing, which negates du duress. And the fourth one is uh, not having a permitted interpretation. These are called takfir they are excuses from a person to be made a a kafir they're called takfir they are obstacles 
from a person to be labeled as a kufr, kafir. When the Ahl Sunnah believe, wujud shurut wa tifa'i al These conditions have to be present and the obstacles have to be absent. And when we were studying ahkab al wadiyah, when we were studying the two types of ahkab, ahkab al wadiyah, we mentioned the conditions of ahkab al wadiyah was what? Sahih and fasid. And we talked about the shurut and the sabab and the mana. When we were speaking about it, we spoke, we spoke about it in details over there. That is what al kalab means linguistically. What does it technically mean? Kalam technically means Allafdul Mufid. It's utterance which benefits. Such as Allahu Rabbuna, Allah is our Lord. Wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Nabiyuna. And Muhammad is our uh, messenger. That is the technical definition according to the Usuliyun. According to the scholars of Usul. He said, Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salah al-Fawzan, he said that Abi Ali al-Juwaini, he didn't mention the technical definition of usul al-fiqh. Nor did he mention the linguistic definition of usul al-fiqh. He hasn't mentioned the linguistic nor the technical definition of uh, speech, kalam. Abi Ali al-Juwaini, rahimahullah, he didn't give the definition of kalam, speech, linguistically nor technically. But what did he suffice himself with? Baliktafa, rather he sufficed himself by choosing what? By choosing what the minimum a speech can be. By the minimum of what a speech can be. And he mentioned that the minimum a speech can be is what? The minimum is two nouns. The minimum it can be, number one is two nouns. And the example for that is Allahu which is a noun. Rabbuna is also another noun. Allahu, Rabbuna. Allah is our Lord. This is what? This is two nouns. That's the minimum a speech can be. One. Or a noun and a, and a verb. A noun and a verb. A noun or a verb. Such as what? Ja'al haqqu The haqq uh, came The haqq came Ja'a is a fi'il And al-haqq is a noun Wa zahaqa al-baatil Which is again the same example For a noun and a verb Are you with me? And all of these Ja'al haqqu And also zahaqa al-baatil All of them are what? Fi'il ala and of course, it has to be a fi'il which is lazim. It has to be a transitive verb. It can't be an intransitive verb. Because if it's an intransitive verb, then it would be three. It would be a verb, and then it would be the object, subject, and it would be the object. We just want the minimum, which is a verb and a subject. Good. Well, like also, قضي الأمر The matter has been judged. قضي الأمر قضي Which is the verb. Al-Amr, which is the noun. This is called what? It's a fi'il. Wada'ibu fa'il. That's finished. So the ism and the verb, which the second type, it can be a fi'il or fa'il, or it can be a what? It can be a fi'il and a fa'il, or it can be a fi'il wada'ibu fa'il. The third one, which is a verb and a particle, such as, ma qama, he never stood. Ma, which is the particle. Qama, which is what? Is the verb. Ma, which is the particle. Qama, which is the verb. O, O, Lam Yakum. Lam, which is the particle. Yakum, which is the verb. Lakin this, this is what Imam Abi Ali al Jawaini mentioned. He mentioned this. And also Al Jarjani. Al Jarjani Aba Al Jurjani, however you say it. And Imam Al Jarjani Rahimullah and Imam Abi Abba Ali al Jawaini, they are the ones who mention that a speech can consist of minimum a what? It can consist the minimum that it can consist of is a a, a verb and a particle. 
and that is not right. According to the grammarians. According to the grammarians, it's not right. Because Lam Maqama, he didn't stand. What is hidden there? The Damir. The pronoun is hidden. Because the word Qama, there's a pronoun hidden. Which is, for example, he didn't stand. It's talking about Zayd Mathal, an example. So, for example, when you say Maqama, he didn't stand, it's really meant to be what? Maqama Zaydun. So, it's not two. That's why. Uh, but why did he bring it? He is saying to you, he's saying to you that whether it's there or not, we're basing it on what? What we can see. We can see ma'aqama. As for the issue of the tahqiq and analyzing the matter, leave that for who? Leave that for the nuhad. That's for the grammarians. They're the ones who are tahqiq, who detail the matter. Pay attention. Good. Good. So as I said to you, this is the view of Imam Abi Ma'ali al-Juwaini he took and also the view that was taken by uh, Al-Jarjani rahimahullah. Or A'ism uh, al-Harf. And A'ism al-Harf is also another view that he took which is not correct. Which is like the word Ya Allah. Are you with me? The word Ya Allah, what is it? Allah is a noun and Ya is a harf. So, and it's also fihi ladar. There's a look to it. It's not as he made it look like. Which is what? The speech here, which is the word ya, the ya is a muqaddar. It is taking the position of a what? A verb and a object, uh, subject. The word ya by itself has taken the position of what? Of a fi'l and a fa'il. The word ya by itself. And what is it that it's taken its position? It took the position of you saying, Ad'u Allah. You see? Ad'u, we can see there's the verb. Where is the subject? The subject is Dhamiru Mustatir Taqdiruhu. Ana. Me. So the word, Ad'u Allah, I call unto Allah, is Harfu Nida, which is that took the position of the word Ad'u'llah. So when the person says, Ya Allah, he's trying to say, Ad'u'llah, I am calling unto Allah. Aba unadillah, or I call unto Allah. Whichever. So from that angle, the only two that we would give him is two nouns, or a noun and a verb. That's it. The extra two that he mentioned is not correct, which is the fi'il and the harf, and the ism and the harf. That all, according to the grammarians, they are the people of tahqiq. They do not see that correct. So the minimum, وَأَقَلُّ مَا يَتَأَلَّفُ مِنْهُ الْكَلَامُ is what? Ismani or ismun wa fi'lun. That's all we can say. Well, kalam, the word kalam, the word kalam is the plural of what? The word kalam is a plural and it's a jam'u taksir. And it's a plural of what? Kalima. It's a plural of what? It's the plural of Kalima. And the Kalima, which is speech in the Arabic language, is three types. It's a noun, a verb, and a particle. Those are the three. And according to those three, the noun is what? The noun is what indicates meaning ma dalla ala ma'nan fi nafsi. It is what indicates meaning in and within itself. Wa lam yaqtarin bi ahadil azmirati thalatha. And it doesn't show any of that, any of the three times, past, present, or future. It doesn't indicate it. The second one is called fi'l. Fi'l is what? Ma dalla ala ma'nan fi nafsi. It is something that indicates meaning, shows it meaning. Wa qtarana bi ahadil azmirati thalatha. And it shows, it shows what? It shows uh, one of the three times. The last one is called harf, particle. And the particle is what? مَا لَا يَدُلُّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نفسي. The harf is that which does not show you meaning in and within itself. وَإِنَّمَا يَظْهَرُ مَعْنَاهُ فِي غَيْرِهِ Its meaning becomes clear when you put it into a, into a context. Good. The, pay attention. 
how do the usuliyun, how do the scholars of usul, how do they analyze the ism, the fi'il, and the harf? In what angle do they look at it? Please pay attention. Please. Al-asma, nouns. Wal-af'al, and verbs. Wal-huruf, and particles. Tabassul hajjatu ila ma'rifatiha. To know them, there are a lot of need. There is a lot of, there is a lot of need for it. Excessive need for a person to know the noun, the verbs, and the particle. فَإِنَّ الْأَسْمَاءَ Because nouns, pay attention, because the nouns, and this is the biggest point for the usuliyun, is the nouns. فَإِنَّ الْأَسْمَاءَ The nouns, مِنَ النَّظَرَةِ الْأُصُولِيَةِ from the observation of the people of Usul, the noun. The observation that the people of Usul put towards the noun is from three types. The Usuliyun. When they look at the noun, they look at it from three angles. Or three types is how the noun is categorized according to. Where in the grammarians it was categorized into three, but three different ones. The, the grammarians... When they, looked at the, when they looked at the noun, they looked at it from the angle of, of ism which is mudhar, ism which is mubham, and an ism which is mudmar. You see, the grammarians, that's what they do. As for the usuliyun, the people of usul, when they look at the noun, it's categorized into three, but three different from the grammarians. What is it? First one is ma yufidul umum, that which benefits generalization. So the first, types of, the first type of nouns, According to the grammar, according to the usuliyun, the people of usul al-fiqh, the first type of noun that they have is nouns that benefit generalization, and they are like al-asma al-mausula, the connectives. Are you with me? The connectives, like al-ladi, al they show generalization, or a indefinite. In the context of negation, uh, indefinite, in the context of a negation, that's the first type. They show generalization. Are you with me? That shows generalization. That's the first type of nouns. The second type is called ma yufidul itlaq, that which shows itlaq. Itlaq means what? Open. That which shows that it's open, that the meaning of this word is open. And it is the noun that come in what? The noun which is indefinite in the context of affirmation. It is the indefinite, pay attention, which is in the context of affirmation. The third type is called ma yufidul khusus, that which shows specification. It shows exclusivity. And that is what? Kal a'lam, like names. Names. If I say Ahmed, all of you guys don't enter it. It's exclusively him I'm referring, I'm speaking to. Al a'lam means what? Uh, names. So the nouns, according to the usuliyun, that's the three types it is for them. Ma yufidul umum, ma yufidul itlaq, and ma yufidul khusus. And all of these matters in details, in details, where it is going to come to us. And we, there's no need for us to hasten for it. And also, what is connected to the verbs are going to come to us. We're not going to speak about it now. What is connected to the verbs is going to come to us. Huh? Not now. As for the particles. As for the... Particles. The person who needs it is not the usuliyun, the fuqaha I need of that. Such as the wow and the fa, al jarati ala ghairiha, the wow and the fa, what they benefit. This is now this topic that inshallah we're going to conclude here. It talks about the types of speech and, that, and the minimum that it can consist of. And we've taken that. And we'll conclude there, inshallah.
Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayhi.